I just want to say thank you to everyone who watches my YouTube channel. And if you don't think a Savannah Monitor will play tug of war, you're wrong. Because they will. And they're actually really good at it. There we go. So if you guys like my videos, oh, he's strong. Please go ahead and leave a like. That helps grow my channel. Also, please comment on my videos. I love interacting with you guys. Uh, it's a lot of fun and I get to answer questions and see that you guys care. Uh, and if you're not a member of the family, you can go ahead and subscribe. It's free. It helps me grow the channel even more. And I've listened to you guys and I do have a Patreon down below. Oh, the alligator death roll. So please go ahead and uh, like, comment, subscribe, bell icon. Hey Reptile Rescue Family. Today we're going to do a video on tortoises, specifically sulcata tortoises. Now as you guys know, this is Tortellini, my sulcata tortoise. And I want to talk about their diet and their shell and why you get pyramiding. Sulcata seem to be the number one tortoise that I see when kept as a pet that gets pyramiding. Although you see pyramiding on other things like redfoots and Russian tortoises, uh, sulcatas are really common because they are the cheapest large tortoise you can get. They're probably the third largest tortoise outside of Galapagos and Aldabra tortoises, which get obviously much larger, but cost much more money. So people will get the sulcata because, hey, this thing gets huge and they're cheap and they can get tamed and you can hold their hands like I'm doing in petting. But I see so many people with pyramiding. Why do you get pyramiding? Well, let's go over the shell. The shell is all creatine, right? Think of it like our fingernails. And their spinal cord is connected down the shell. They can feel from their shell. They have nerve endings, but not pain sensors. So they can feel, but they can't feel pain. So a lot of the times you see their shell with damage because they dip down into their shell. The whole other story, their shells, their scoots on their shell grow from these center points. So a lot of the times you'll see the pyramiding. What is that? What's causing that? What's causing that tortellini? Well, some people will say, hey, it's humidity and true. When they're babies, you need to have a little bit higher humidity because you need to keep that shell a little bit soft so it can, when they come out of the egg, it can form into the right starting position. But that's only the starting position. Once it's in the starting position, how do they get pyramidy? Well, it's almost always their diet. You sit here, Tort. Yeah, we're gonna talk about your food. So what do you guys think in the comments right now? You can tell me what do you think is the right food for a sulcata tortoise? We're gonna talk about it and trigger warning ahead of time, I'm not wearing gloves. Do you think it's a mix of green veggies, vegetables, this is a bell pepper, and blueberries. Now everything I show you, the salcata tortoise can eat, but what should its primary diet be? This looks delicious, right? Fruits, veggies, getting moisture from here, vitamins A, C, E, antioxidants, all the dark greens and calciums from this. If you think this should be their primary diet, you're wrong. What? This will cause this type of tortoise's shell to grow way too fast and it will cause pyramiding. That's right, pyramiding again is the wrong diet. So not just eating meats and rodents and things can cause them a big shell, but the wrong amount of veggies. Guys, the Salcata tortoise is a desert tortoise. It's not a tortoise from a rainforest or from a high greens area where a veggie like this would be really good for them. This is a desert tortoise. So this is not good for this. Okay, then what is the primary diet that this should eat? Good questions. <laughs> kind of a mix of two things, if you're, especially if you're keeping them indoors as a pet. You always have your commercial tortoise chow, which is basically these little pellets and you can get them in bigger sizes so as your tortoise gets larger, you can get the larger pellets. Um, tortoise chows are really good because tortoise chows are mostly compressed of hay. That's right. Your Salcata tortoise's major diet should be hay. This is Timothy hay, the best kind of hay for them. Because your Salcata tortoise should spend most of its day grazing on hay, like a cow. Should be gnawing on this all during the day. If you keep them outside in a grassed area, 
they're going to eat the grass and it's just the same. Um, so you don't have to worry about that. Now, why is this important? So when you have an indoor tortoise, or even if it's outdoor on a grassy area, they're going to be eating that hay, which is what they need. But another important thing is their beak. Their beak sometimes will overgrow and become hard for them to heat correct, eat correctly. That's why they have to gnaw. Well, on an indoor enclosure, you want to put some, or even outside if it's just on a grass area, you want to make sure you have some type of hard slab. This is not what I use, but I just wanted to show it off. I use a one inch thick cement block that I put all of his food on. So they're going to be grinding on this slab when they eat. You can hear it grind. Those are just my fingernails. Think of that as the tortoise's beak, just grinding. And that's what's going to keep their beak at the proper level. Since their beak always grows, that way they'll be able to open their mouth correctly and eat the, all the food that they need and be able to chew on it. Now, tortoises know, like us when we have our nails get too long and we know we have to grind them, tortoises know how big their beak has to be. So when we keep them as pets, okay, we can give, put them large, you know, cement, stone slabs in there, rock. But a lot of times I see people keep them outside and you'll still see the incorrect beaks. The tortoise needs to be gnawing. It needs to be gnawing on hay, but it also needs an area to grind its beak. So a lot of times I see people feed them on plastic trays because, oh, I don't want them to eat the dirt. That's good. You don't want them to eat dirt, but you need them to grind their beak. So you got to feed on some cement, a stone slab. Also in the wild, these guys will go up to just large boulders even without eating and grind their beak down. But still, in that outdoor enclosure, you need to put a large stone. But some tortoises don't go to those stones and do that. They just don't care. But a feeding slab makes them do that. It makes them go over and do that, which is great. So what is the best thing then in the wild that these things eat? Like how do they survive in the Nevada desert here in the US? There's very little hay, you know? We know, okay, they can eat the tortoise chow. It's basically ground hay. We know we're gonna give them hay to gnaw on or if they're outside, they're gnawing on grass. But how do they survive in the wild and what do they do even in captivity? This is the trigger warning, guys, because I don't have gloves. This is dried sulcata tortoise poop. And this is the number one thing that they eat. Um, why? Well, if you look, it is just filled with undigested hay. That is right. These guys will recycle their food. They will eat the same pieces of hay over and over and over and over continued to get all of the nutrients from it and slowly break it down. In the desert, it does get cold. How do these guys survive? They dig holes, a nice burrow underground together, and they all go in this underground burrow. Well, how do they survive under there for a couple weeks? That's right, they eat and drink each other's and their own's poop and pee. Now, they recycle that food. That's, you know, survival of the fittest, it's evolution. That's how these guys stay alive without food because there is a ton of undigested hay in that poop. And that's what sulcatas will do. Now, as your pet, a lot of times people, especially inside, they'll pick up the poop, they'll clean the poop. They don't want their sulcata eating poop. That's okay. But just think about how naturally these guys grow. I mean, they're slowly withering down all these nutrients, slowly from multiple time digested hay and other foods. And that allows their shell and the tortoise itself to grow in size very slowly. That's the natural, healthy growth of the sulcata. But most people want a large tortoise very fast. Adult sulcatas can go for hundreds of dollars where babies can go for under $50. How do I get a baby to turn into a large thing fast? By feeding it the wrong food 
power feeding. It's what it is. It's power feeding, just like snakes and lizards, to get it huge. Except for these guys, their shells pyramid. It's not good. It's not healthy for them. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed this video. It brought you some knowledge on what these guys should be eating and help you guys out. Now, just so you guys know, as a treat, you've seen it. This stuff is just fine. Tortellini loves this stuff. Uh, I give him blueberry treats. I give him some slices of pepper. I'll give him some greens, sometimes the stem of the green because I'll feed the leaves to the bearded dragons and my vegetable eaters. But the stems, there's a lot of water in there, not a lot of vitamins for growth. Well, that will cover his water needs. Give him, you know, he sees himself as eating a treat and it doesn't give him too many nutrients, which is really good. Also, you guys need to provide water for the sulcata. I soak tortellini once a week. He drinks a ton of water during that soak. And then a couple hours later, he takes a massive pee, just gallons of water. So be ready for that. All right, guys, take care. You want to say goodbye? You want to wave? You want me to wave for you? There you go. Take care, guys. These are great tortoises. So friendly if you raise them right and keep them healthy. Thank you guys for supporting my reptile rescue family.